Hi, I'm Heidi with Onigo Stamping. Welcome to my craft corner. Today, I am not gonna use any ink pads. Instead, I'm gonna use some markers. I'm really excited to share this fun technique with you and show you how to make two fabulous rainbow cards. Before I get started, if you have any questions or need any help with card making, paper crafting, rubber stamping, I would love to help you. If you'd like to attend an online class or hang out with me on Facebook, that would be awesome too. Go ahead and leave me a comment or send me an email. In the description to this video, you are going to find all sorts of links. You're gonna find a link to my Facebook group and this is really where all the fun happens. So I would love for you to come on over and join me there. You're also gonna find a link to my newsletter. I send out a weekly newsletter with all of the great information. So definitely sign up for that too. And of course, if you like today's video, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Okay, Oni Go, let's get stamping. I'm going to use a sentiment from the You Are Amazing stamp set. This stamp set was in the January to June mini catalog, which means that it is gonna be retiring at the end of June, which is really sad uh, because I absolutely love the greetings in here. They're big, they're bold. Um, you know, you have congrats, thank you, happy birthday exactly everything you need, right? So we're gonna use the You Are Amazing stamp from this stamp set. And then for the second card I'm gonna make, I'm also going to use the Spiral Die stamp. This comes, uh, this is in the brand new annual catalog uh, and it's one big giant stamp. So we're gonna look at that and see how we can color that as well. So to start, I chose five of our stamp and write markers. Now our stamp and write markers come in packs of 10 based by color collection. And I, it's a long story, but I do not have a full color collection of any of this, any of those stamp and write markers, but I do have about half of each of the, uh, the different collections. So I pulled out five from the Brights collection. Now these are the stamp and write markers. They should not be confused with the blends. Let me show you what the blends, remember the blends are kind of a square thick, right? The stamp and blends are alcohol markers. The stamp and write markers are just water-based markers. So these markers we can use to color in our stamps. You don't want to color in your stamps with the blends because they aren't going to work and they could potentially damage your stamp possibly. Um, so you want to stay, stay away from the blends. They're just not going to work in the same way. They're going to dry too quick. It's, it's, you're not going to get the same effect. For this, when we are coloring on the stamps, it's best to use the cling stamps. So let me show you what the cling stamps looks like. I have already pulled out the stamp we're going to use, the You Are Amazing stamp. The cling stamps are those red rubber stamps that we have. These are gonna work really well for this technique. I did wanna show you, um, just before I get started, well, I'm gonna show you after I do this first because I want you to see what it, what it should look like uh, before we move on to what we don't want it to look like, right? So, I am gonna put these maybe in rainbow order, if I can, kind of. Let's do it like that. And I'm just gonna start, normally I would start with the lightest and go to the darkest, but I want the red and the, the mango together. So I'm gonna start with the Poppy Parade. And I am just going to start by coloring right on that A. And actually I wanna do the um, UR in just purple. So we're gonna leave that. I'm just gonna color on the stamps on the amazing part. So now I'm gonna come in with this mango. And we'll just put that right in here. And then the granny apple green. Coastal cabana. And finally, a little bit of gorgeous grape here on the end for the G. And then I'm gonna come in with the gorgeous grape and I'm gonna do these letters up top here. I'm gonna take a small piece of basic white cardstock, which I have right here. I am going to huff on this stamp. Now you can't see me because I don't have my camera turned the right direction, but I'm just gonna blow on it so you can hear me. <sighs> just gonna blow on that stamp and that just uh, wets it down a little bit. And then try to get it straight on here. We'll just stamp that right down and there we go. There is our colorful stamp. So hopefully you can see that. Let me hold that up just a little bit. 
There we go. Isn't that pretty? Love those rainbow colors. So now I wanted to show you um, what happens when you use this with one of our photopolymer stamps. So I pulled out the Biggest Wish, which this is in the the uh, the new annual catalog as well. And I really wanted to use this one because I love the sentiments in here, and I thought it would just be, you know, so much fun to use. But let me show you what happens because it's not it's not pretty. I mean, it's okay. You could you could use it. You could do it. Um, but it just doesn't give you the same look. And of course I didn't prepare this, so let's get out a block. We'll put this on a block here. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna color. I wanna use the brush tip. I'm just gonna color the different letters, different colors. All right, so I have my colors on there. I just have a piece of basic white. <gasps> Again, I'm gonna just huff on that. And then I stamp it. And you can see it just gets really blotchy. So the red rubber really helps the ink evenly distribute over the surface. Let me see if I can hold these up for you where we can see them. There we go. The red rubber really helps the ink distribute itself evenly over the surface. The photopolymer stamps are going to let that ink kind of pool in areas and give you a really blotchy, streaky look, which might be fine, especially um, if you're just doing like a, a background design or something, it would be okay. But for words, if it gets too splotchy, I find that it's kind of hard to read. So not a fan, not a fan of the splotchiness. <laughs> All right, I cleaned off my stamps and now I wanna show you how I made the background for this card. So I'm just gonna set my stamp sentiment aside. I'm gonna set the markers aside, all my stamps and everything. I'm gonna pull out a piece of basic white cardstock. This piece of basic white cardstock is five inches by three and three quarters. And then I'm gonna pull in my trimmer, okay? And I am using the Brights Collection DSP. Now this comes in each of the 10 colors in the Brights family, and there are uh, two pieces of each. It's double-sided, and there's two different types of designs. So I just pulled out a number of these, and I wanna cut some strips. Now you can use scraps like this one, but I didn't quite have enough scraps, so I'm gonna be cutting from some larger sheets too. And I am not gonna even measure these strips. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut them. I want them different widths. It really doesn't matter how wide they are. So we're just gonna cut a few of these. All right, I cut a bunch of these little strips and I'll lay these out. Once again, I'm gonna follow the same pattern. I wanna grab my silicone craft sheet if I can unearth it over here. And it is of course dirty. Let me go clean this off a little bit. I have put my piece of basic white cardstock on the silicone craft sheet. I'm gonna put down some liquid, some, uh, yeah, some liquid adhesive right on here. Just put that all over. might have to come and add more we'll see I'm gonna start with some gorgeous grape we're just gonna you know what I didn't quite I'll make sure you get all the way to the corners because you need to get those corners stuck down so all right I'm gonna start with a piece of gorgeous grape and I'm just gonna lay that in the corner diagonally 
And then after Gorgeous Grape, we want to grab a little bit of Coastal Cabana. And I just want to make sure that both ends go all the way off my cardstock. And we're just going to push those right together. And then some Granny Apple Green. After the Granny Apple Green is going to be some Mango Melody. thin strip. This is why I like to cut them different sizes um, just because I feel like it gives it a little more interest. All right, so I have put a number of these strips already on here. Before I finish this off though, what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna grab some of these strips down here. Instead of cutting more, I am just going to take this piece of white, I'm gonna flip it over, and I am just gonna trim this off. And we're gonna come back and do this whole thing, but I just wanted to grab, have some of these spares to use. So we'll just trim those off. and then finish up. So I finished covering the entire piece of white with those strips and then I'm just gonna take this, turn it over, and once again, I'm just gonna trim off the sides. Here's our background sheet. Isn't that pretty? All right, let me get all this mess out of the way. So this piece of paper was five inches by three and three quarters. I have another piece. This is five and three sixteenths by three and fifteen sixteenths. Doing math in my head. And I'm just gonna adhere this right to the front. Just like this. All right, then I'm gonna grab my Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. And I want to get to the white, which of course is at the bottom. So we'll just dump these out. This comes with five different colors. I have two vanillas in here right now, but it comes with these, these five colors. So I'm going to grab the white. And I just want to 
tie this around the front of my card. We'll straighten it up in just a second. No worries. All right, let's see if this is tight enough. Probably not. I Lately, I have not been able to tie Baker's Twine tight enough on my card. I find that Baker's Twine is both very easy to tie and very hard to tie. <laughs> because it gets really loose. I don't know, I don't have as much trouble with other ribbons. I have a hard time keeping Baker's Twine taut. That's hard to say, Baker's Twine taut while I tie it, there we go. I don't know if that was the third time or the fourth time, but it worked, maybe. All right, I also find that Baker's Twine tends to twist so it doesn't always give me the beautiful bows that I want, but I like it. I like the looks of it. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. And like, it is easy to tie. I mean, there's a lot of ribbons that are a lot harder to tie than Baker's Twine, so. All right, I'm gonna grab my You Are Amazing, a little piece of Granny Apple Green that this is gonna go on. Let's put that right on the front, just like that. And then I have some uh, Granny Apple Green cardstock. This is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Grab my bone folder and we'll just give this a good crease down the front, just like that. Then I'm gonna use some Stampin' Dimensionals. My sheet of Stampin' Dimensionals is almost gone. So what I like to do when I'm down to the end is I will just take my scissors, my paper snips, and I'll just snip this and create little pieces. This way I use the whole sheet. Cannot let any of those little bits go to, go to waste come in and do over here too. There we go. Grab my take your pick tool with the pointy pokey end and grab those backs off. Just like that. And we'll pop this right on the front. Now I wanna take the same with my sentiment strip. Or not strip, I guess it's a whole piece. We'll just add some dimensionals to this as well. Got to snip some more. And then we'll add this to the front too. I'm just gonna Pull those right off. There we go. And then this just goes right down here on the bottom. And there is our beautiful rainbow card with a rainbow sentiment on it. All right, let me show you how to do the second card. For my second card, I'm going to use the Stamparatus with the Spiral Die Stamp. And I find that the Stamparatus is really the best way to use these large background stamps. So I've already kind of lined it up here. You can see <laughs> I've used this piece of paper a few times. You can get the grid paper that comes with, uh, that comes for the Stamparatus. And I love this grid paper. I think it is perfect, perfectly sized. And uh, it has the measurements and everything on there. So I use it all the time. So I'm gonna ink up my stamp, right? So let's do the same thing. I'm gonna start with, um, I'm gonna go a little bit, a little bit different. Well, okay, I'm gonna start with some of the Poppy Parade right here in the center. And this gets a little bit crazy because I'm like, I'm always like, well, how do I wanna color these, these spirals? How far do I wanna go, right? 
So we'll see. I'm guaranteed to get some poppy parade on my on my mango melody marker, but that's okay. I'll just uh, I'll just brush out the marker on a piece of scrap paper, and it will come out. of one spiral for a while with the tops of the next spiral. And as the spirals get bigger, I do that a little bit less. So it's this one. It's like I said, it's hard to follow how these should go. <laughs> I guess if you were really, if you did tie dye a lot, maybe you'd have a better idea of how to color this properly. Um, I don't do tie dye all the time, so I'm just, you know, basing it on what seems right. <laughs> so we're just gonna color in here. So I colored the whole stamp with those same five colors of Stampin' Write markers. And now it's a little bit hard to get down and huff on a big stamp like this, like I did on the smaller stamp. So what I am going to do instead is, and plus I want it to be a little bit, uh, a little bit wetter, a little bit mushier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a Stampin' Spritzer and I am just going to add a little water to this. Now I am just using regular basic white cardstock. You could use, um, watercolor paper with this if you wanted, but I decided just to go with the regular basic white. It will get a little bit wet, uh, but it should be okay. So I'll just go ahead and stamp that, give it a good rub. And then I'm gonna take off this piece. I'm gonna turn it, ooh, isn't that pretty? We're gonna muddy this up just a tiny little bit. I'm just gonna turn this about 80, uh, um, 180 degrees. I'm gonna re-mist just a little bit my stamp, wet that up again. And then I'm going to stamp this a second time and just get a little bit more of that residual color in there. All right, so we'll peel this off. Oh, that is so pretty, look at that. Gorgeous, just like tie dye. All right, so go ahead and set my stamparatus aside, and let's make the rest of this rest of this card. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this uh, dry a little bit while we're sitting here. I'm gonna use the same uh, "You Are Amazing" stamp that I used on the other one, but this time I just want it to be one color, uh, just because there's so much color already going on with the tie dye that I don't want to I don't want to con um, conflict with that. Like I don't want to what do I want to say? Be in conflict? I guess that's the same thing. Um, I don't want to pull away from that. So I'm just going to color the whole stamp. Now I could pull out my uh, gorgeous grape ink pad and use that. But instead, I'm just, since we're using markers today, I'm just going to use my gorgeous grape marker and color that entire stamp. Just like that. We'll huff on it again. <sighs> and I have the same size piece of cardstock and I am going to put the dimensions on my website so they will be there for you. And there is our You Are Amazing in Gorgeous Grape. I'm gonna take this and layer it on a piece of Gorgeous Grape. There we go. And then I'm gonna layer this on a piece of Coastal Cabana. I just grabbed a new sheet of dimensionals to use for this, but um, actually I need to do just a little bit more first. So we're gonna go ahead and adhere this piece to a piece of Coastal Cabana. So this piece of basic white is 
five inches by three and three quarters inches. And I'm going to put it on a piece of Coastal Cabana that is three and 15 sixteenths by five and three sixteenths. So just three sixteenths bigger each direction. And this is still just a little bit wet. You might want to wait till it dries, um, dries completely before you glue it on, but I'm just going to keep going. We're just going to keep going. All right, so I have that glued on. Then I have a piece of gorgeous great cardstock, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And if I can find my bone folder, there it is. We'll just use my bone folder, give that a nice crease. And I'm gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals to put this on the front. Give it a little pop. So we'll put some Stampin' Dimensionals on here. I always like to use a lot, you know, a fair number to make sure that it doesn't get smushed when it is going through the mail. I'm gonna adhere this up, the greeting with Stampin' Dimensionals too. So while I have them out, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it all at once. Put some Dimensionals on here. And there we go. Now I'll pull all these backs off. Pull my backs off this one too. And we'll adhere this to the card front. Oh, that's so pretty. So, so pretty. All right, there we go. And we'll add the You Are Amazing right here. Now, I was, I decided I just wanted just a little bit extra bling on here. So I'm gonna grab my Artistry Blooms self-adhesive sequins. You know, these are my favorite, my favorite embellishments. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck that one under here. I'm gonna use a couple different colors. Now these colors don't actually match, um, except for the Mango Melody. That one is the right color, but I just think, I don't know, they worked for me. What do you think? I'm gonna do some pool party ones too. I think because they're kind of clear, translucent, um, it doesn't matter that the color doesn't quite, quite match. Let's grab a little, oh, you know what? We're gonna change things out. I wanna put a pool party one. I'm gonna pull in the pool party one over here. Changing my mind on things. Ooh, see, there was two on there. I knew it. All right. Oops. There we go. That looks a little better. So there is just a few little artistry bloom sequins. What do you think? Ah! Loving the tie-dye. Let me pull in the other card. And there are our two gorgeous rainbow cards using markers on stamps. Weren't those some fabulous rainbow cards? I love using this, this technique to really expand what I can do with my stamps and get lots of colors on my cards. All of the dimensions for today's projects, as well as more still photos of the cards, can be found on my website, and you're going to find the link to my website in the description to this video. If you liked today's video, make sure that you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and then come on back and see me for more tips, techniques, and inspiration. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.